Welcome to this YSL tutorial. In this session we're going to teach you how to work with correlated subqueries in Microsoft SQL Server. What we'll cover in this session is first of all how to create correlated subqueries. We'll start with a reminder of how normal subqueries work and then show you how to convert a normal subquery into a correlated subquery. We'll explain the importance of using table aliases and then when we run the query we'll try to attempt to explain how it actually works. When we've done that, we'll finish the video with a couple of other examples of correlated subqueries. We'll explain, explain how you can use different comparison operators and how you can use calculated fields in a correlated subquery as well. So let's get started. Let's start with a quick reminder of how normal subqueries work. What I've got here is a basic query showing me three fields from my movies database. If I execute that, you can see the, uh, the set of results. What I'd like to do is show these details only for films with the maximum running time in minutes. And that's where a normal subquery comes in handy. If I add a WHERE clause to my main query, I can ask to show where the film runtime in minutes is equal to, and then here's where I write a subquery to select the max runtime in minutes from the entire table. So select max film runtime minutes. excuse the typing, from TBL Film. When I execute this query now, I'll see that I get one single film returned. If there was more than one film with the same highest running time, I'd see more than one record. Um, but that's how a basic subquery works. The important thing about this example, and the important thing about basic subqueries, is that the subquery itself can be executed completely independently of the main outer query. So if I select that basic select statement and execute it, it still returns a value all by itself. The main difference between a correlated subquery and a normal subquery is that a correlated subquery relies on the outer query to be executed to provide its values. So what that means is that a correlated subquery will be executed for every record returned by the outer query. So to demonstrate that, what we're going to do is rewrite this query. If I just execute it again so you can remind yourself of the results. We're going to execute this query so that we can see details for films with the longest running time in each country in the table. One very important thing you must do when you're writing correlated subqueries is ensure that the tables used in the outer query and the inner query both have a sensible alias. So I've already assigned an alias to the film table in the outer query. Uh, I've given it the alias of F. I'm going to quickly assign one to the film table in the inner query. I'm going to call that one uh, as G, because it's the next letter in the alphabet. The reason that's important is because in order to turn this into a correlated subquery, I need to add a WHERE clause and in the WHERE clause, I need to refer to the film table in both the outer and inner query. And without the alias, it would be impossible to distinguish between the two. The WHERE clause itself is actually fairly straightforward. I want to show records in the inner query where the film country ID field in the film table in the inner query is equal to the film country ID field from the film table in the outer query. If I execute this query now, what we should see is a set of results where I get one record for every single country showing the film with the longest running time in that country. So how does the correlated subquery actually work? Well, let's see if we can run through a quick example. One thing to realize is that in a correlated subquery, the inner query is executed for every single record that might be returned by the outer query. So if we go through an example for the first record that might be returned by the outer query. I've written a quick extra query here which shows me the film country ID, name and running time in minutes of all of the films from the film table. And the country ID for the first film is 241. So the first time the inner query is executed, it tries to find the highest running time in minutes of films with a country ID of 241. I've actually written a separate query here, which shows us what that value is. So the highest running time in minutes 
for films in the United States is 195. The running time in minutes of Jurassic Park is 127. So when I go back to the full query here, the value 127 is not the same as the value 195, so Jurassic Park isn't returned to the final set of results. That process is then simply repeated for every single record in the main outer query. So the next record in there will be Spider-Man, whose country ID is 241. So we find what the highest running time in minutes for films with a country ID of 241 is. That's 195 again, of course. And then we compare Spider-Man's running time, which is 121, against 195, and that doesn't match. So Spider-Man isn't returned to the main query either. Eventually, we'll have processed the entire list of film names, uh, sorry, of films, and we'll end up with a, at least one result for every single country in the table. From this point on, it's reasonably simple to experiment to get different sets of results. So, for example, let's quickly change the operator. Rather than trying to find films um, whose running time in minutes is equal to the highest, what I'd like to do now is find films whose running time in minutes is longer than the average running time for films in a particular country. So in this example, I'd hopefully expect to get more than one result. I'm going to show all the films in each country whose running time in minutes is longer than the average length of films in that country. If I execute this query now, I ought to get more than one result for each country, and there we do. I can also use expression fields or calculated fields in my correlated subqueries. So rather than showing films that are longer than average for a particular country, let's show films that are longer than average of all films in a particular year. What I need to do in order to make that work is calculate the year of the film release date. So I'll do that in the outer query first. So that calculates the year of F film release date. I can actually get rid of my country table altogether. I won't need that in this query. So let's get rid of the join and the country table. And what I can do now is ask to see in my inner query where the year of g dot film release date is equal to the year of f dot film release date. I'll add a quick order by clause as well to make sure. Order by, I'll give this a quick alias. Order by y. And if I execute this entire query, I'll find films that are longer than average for all films released in the same year. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wisel.co.uk.